Hey guys, it's JD, and in today's video, I'm going to be reading out the essays that got me into Stanford University. Before I get into reading the essays, though, I want to give you guys this week's book recommendation. Uh, I actually just finished this book. It's called The Black Flamingo by Dean Ada. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. It basically centers around this character, Michael or Michalis, who's half Jamaican and half Cypriot Greek. It's one of those first person, present tense, really intense kind of books that really lets you get into a character's head. And the main character is really struggling for a lot of this book to figure out his own identity. Like, he knows who he is, but he hasn't necessarily come to terms with that. He's, as I said, mixed race, and he's gay, and the story's about him growing up in London, and the difficulties he has feeling connection or feeling like he belongs fully in different communities, and then how he kind of finds himself and really freedom in his identity through the community of a drag society he joins in college. It's got a really cool structure too. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but basically the writing is in almost sort of free verse kind of form and uh, also interspersed in it are actual poems in italics that he's writing as the story goes on. It's just a really wonderful read and really different from what I've read in a long time so I'd highly recommend it. All right I'm gonna get into the essays now but before I do that I do want to make a little disclaimer just a general statement. These are the essays that I wrote that I felt expressed who I am and that the admissions officers thought were a good fit for Stanford. That doesn't mean they would be for somebody else. Definitely write your own essays and don't feel like your essays have to look like anybody else's. Everybody's essays will look incredibly different because everybody is incredibly different. This is definitely not, you know, a curated guide on follow these steps, check these boxes, and write your essay and you'll get accepted. It's just an example. All right, without further ado, I'm just going to get straight into reading the essays. The first essay is my personal statement, which is the Common App essay that I submitted to all the schools I applied to through the Common App app, including Stanford. Just a heads up, I'm going to be looking down a bit because I have the essay down here on my computer. I chose to respond to the prompt, some students have a background, identity, interest, or talent that is so meaningful they believe their application would be incomplete without it. If this sounds like you, then please share your story. When I was younger, I aspired to be rich so I could own an enormous library. I imagine the sense of self-worth and pride that would accompany gazing at floor-to-ceiling sturdy oak shelves almost bursting under the weight of beautiful volumes in various languages. As a child, complete success and ownership of what you love feels completely plausible, a dream only kept from you by the restrictions of time. The only difference I saw at that time between poor and rich was the public library users and the library owners. The only thing keeping me from the latter was the barrier of age and motivation, which I was sure I could overcome by harnessing knowledge under my fist and using it to attain anything I wanted. I continued to hold this view while I was homeschooled, but when I began to attend a private high school, I realized that the difference between basic economic security and the lack thereof was much more complex. In the past three years, I've come to see that not only are my peers unlike myself, but they don't know that there's a difference between us. No one understands the concept of economic insecurity if they have never had to give up their summers and afternoons after school to work to help with the bills, if they've never had to pay for their own expenses and textbooks, if they complain about having dinner with their parents, never having experienced a time when their parents were at work before breakfast and back after their bedtimes. The only other people my age I've encountered who truly understood this were those whose knowledge was also founded on personal experience. But the worst part about this lack of awareness is the fact that I consider myself to be very privileged. Certainly I have to work, but I also go to private school. I can't afford to get my driver's license like some others in my class, but I own a smartphone. The issue isn't that most people at my high school don't see me, it's that they don't see anyone who's worse off. Those who can't afford to go to school, who have to work longer hours than me, who are separated from their parents at the border, they don't see any of those people. Not really. Even amongst the most politically liberal, there seems to be an underlying current of fear and denial that prevents the most basic empathy. This led me to question why. All my life, the process of buying books has been inherently thoughtful. It involves exploring used bookstores, carefully considering and handling each book before buying it. I choose the books that I own carefully because I need to. Even after I buy the book, I read it with appreciation and then retire it to a shelf which is not a symbol of my money, but a roadmap of my true thoughts and interests. I value my books more than anything else because of the thoughts they provoke. From this, I've learned that what the people who can stock their shelves full of new leather-bound books don't, thoughtful awareness. 
That's what separates me from my schoolmates. No matter their political identity, people don't often think about issues that seem distant from them, if for no other reason than they don't have to. Because of the perspective my economic circumstances have given me, I actively engage with new ideas and perspectives in order to avoid making the same mistakes as those around me which might cause someone's knowledge or needs to be overlooked due to personal circumstances. I think and I act. I've come to understand that the rich people I envied as a child might have enormous libraries, but they certainly don't have them to read the books. Just a quick note on the common app personal statement essay. I think for this one it's really important to give like a specific anecdote or twist that kind of connects the reader to you and something that's really important to you, like for me that was books and kind of childhood experience, that whole thing, but then also to have a sense of something that's really important to you. Uh, in my case, I guess, the acknowledgement and meeting the needs of different perspectives and my growing awareness of that when I grew up. Just try and give the best picture of yourself both in really specific sense and in a really broad sense that you can. And you obviously can't include everything in this. I didn't include all of my beliefs, but it's good to include some broad and some specific things that are really important to you. For the short questions that are Stanford specific, I'll just go through those now. The first one was, what's the most significant challenge society faces? I wrote that there is a loss of imagination resulting in the lessening of both individuality and empathy. People rarely take the time to introspect and consider what makes them distinct and why they ought to own that, and at the same time they fail to consider how others also have unique value. For the last two summers, uh, you had to write down what you did in the last two summers. I just put a whole bunch of things kind of with parentheses and semicolons just so I could make the most of the space. I wrote working half-time 2018 and full-time 2019 at the dry eye company, my mom's business, to fund school and save for college, taking two classes, English composition, English literature at Olympic College, local community college, taking driver's ed, reading books, particularly classics, Russian literature, writing, prose, poetry, and social commentary. Then there was kind of the typical one, I think there might have been a couple choices on this, but I chose the historical moment or event that you would want to travel back to. Yanis Ritsos writing poetry from inside the Greek prison camp. I want to understand whether he did it for himself to get through the experience or to rebel against lack of free speech. Yanis Ritsos is my favorite poet, and uh, the fact that he's Greek kind of connected with something else I had in my additional information about my dad being Greek and kind of my personal background. And then the next question is what five words best describe you? I don't know, I struggled with this one and I ended up just listing some words, but I knew some other people who got in who did some really, really clever things in five words, like describing themselves and not necessarily using each of the five words as kind of adjectives. I wrote intellectual, genuine, self-actualized, determined, and stalwart. What can be really helpful if you go for that approach is to ask like some of your friends to describe you so it doesn't feel like you're kind of tooting your own horn. Then the next section is what do you read, listen to, or watch. I made a few categories. Books, Gogol's The Overcoat, George Medaudel's Fantastes, Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment, Bulgakov's Master and Margarita, Yanni Sardizos's Poetry, Music, Yanis Kotsiras's To Adrio Lulvo, Vladimir Vysotsky's Festinia Sources, The Great Courses Plus Lectures, topics like Russian literature, ancient history and archaeology, Greek literature, logic, philosophy, operas, Yevgeny Onyegin and the Pearl Fishers, movies, Dr. Zhivago, I don't watch a lot of movies, unfortunately. Um, I like horror, but I wasn't really thinking about that when I made this application, and that was the one that I had watched with my friend really shortly before I wrote this. One thing you are looking forward to at Stanford, having interesting conversations, academic and non-academic, with a new diverse group of people. I come from a little town with little diversity of perspectives, so getting to know how others see the world is really important to me. I think this is part of what makes a rich learning environment. And then there was a question that was like, what would you do with an extra hour in a day? I would write a poem about how time is being commoditized and how little the world appreciates it until it is gone, all the while sipping mint tea. Stanford had some short essays too. These are like a little bit longer than the short response questions I just went through. Reflect on an idea or experience that makes you excited about learning. The classroom thrummed with energy and anticipation. It seemed counterintuitive. What could elevate Thomas Hobbes to be exciting? But in the history classroom, somehow the energy of my history teacher's animated face lit the room and caused minds to ponder new depths. We had split into little groups of three or four, and I was seated with people I'd spoken probably two words to outside of class. But, such is the power of conversation, we all poured out our ideas. It was that collaborative sense of hearing different perspectives and piecing together fragments to create the mosaic of history. It is that height of academic conversation that excites me to learn. Learning transcends all backgrounds, having elements that go beyond subjective experience. 
At the same time, it unites different perspectives, because the more perspectives there are, the more complete of any idea we find of the truth. I went from a little frightened at the prospect of shedding the comfort of my friend group to growing exuberance as I heard ideas I would never have thought of about Hobbes according to different people's interests. People who naturally think about context took a structuralist approach, one economically inclined person saw the reading through a Marxist lens, another a feminist critique far more than ever would have been thought of by one individual. This little history discussion about a seemingly dense and objective text brought to life learning for me by showing me the power of perspectives and conversation. This builds on a theme I already established a bit in my personal statement and some of the other parts of my application, which is the importance of conversation and engaging different perspectives in an academic conversation. And it also draws upon my favorite class, basically, in high school, which is my history class. I had a really awesome teacher who led really awesome discussions and uh, it truly was one of the things that got me most excited about learning. Now, here is my very embarrassing note to my future roommate. Um, alright, here goes. Most esteemed future roommate, if you walk in at 2 o'clock a.m. to find me lying on the floor listening to depressing music by Vysotsky and clutching a volume of Homer or Dostoevsky like a teddy bear, please do not be alarmed. As an only child, I've never had to share my room except with a parent, and so the transition might be a little rocky, although I by all means invite you to my carpeted book and English club. Further, books have always brought me comfort, whether to escape from loneliness or the crowd, usually the latter, I'm rather introverted, and I alternate between daring to socialize and retreating upon a few beloved volumes to which I give equal or greater affection than people. In that line, I desire to know all of your favorite books, or the ones you detest, in order to know you better. Whenever I meet people, I think of what their story would be like, what author's voice it might be written in, and what the title would be. Needless to say, hit me up if you ever want to borrow a book. Or a pen. Yours bookishly, Katie. I don't know, I wanted to have at least like one part of the application that was like really kind of my voice and sense of humor in writing, because I mentioned in my application that I enjoy writing, so I wanted to have one that wasn't taking it as seriously as the rest of it, and so I kind of went for it with that. Thankfully it worked out, um, <laughs> but as you can see that connects to some other parts of my application like the love of books, the music taste that I mentioned earlier, my interest in classics which I put in my academic interest section. So for that kind of thing just think of it as a way to show some new parts of yourself and to connect back to other parts of it so they start to see the whole picture of who you are come together. The next one was a prompt that was to give something that was meaningful to you and why. I wrote, the novel Fantastes by George MacDonald was my childhood favorite book and crops up again and again in my mind with new meaning every passing year. As a child, my mom read it to me and I loved it so much that it was one of the first full books I read on my own. Its meaning to me then was the story. I admired the artful crafting of characters, the artistic fairylands and realistic houses which mingled reality, metaphor, and the grotesque with beautiful language. It played a large role in my early attempts at writing fantasy fiction and short stories. In middle school, I reread it again, and I found new meaning in the complexity of the characters and the changes in mindset and belief of Anaros, the main character experienced throughout his trials. Several years later, after having developed an interest in classics and having studied my own Greek heritage in more depth, I loved MacDonald's incorporation of aspects of the classical Greek world, from allusions to mythology and philosophy and the descriptions and characters to the Greek etymology of many of the character names, out of those meaning to progress upward. Still an enthusiast for classics and an aspiring writer, my current self still finds meaning in this childhood favorite. I revel in MacDonald's brilliant use of language and mobilization of the metaphors of all time. It is his application of the classics that inspired me to pursue that subject along with others to enrich my own writing and communication. In this one, I did a couple of things. I kept with my earlier theme about my love of books and kind of zoned in on a particular one because before I've had a chance to list some of the books that I've been reading, to uh, mention my love of books and how that kind of connects to my values in the personal statement, and then in this last one to zone in on one of those books, one that really inspired my love of it and to explore at different stages in my life how I interacted with it, as well as connecting back to my love of classics, my love of writing, which I hadn't gotten as into in a lot of the rest of my application, as well as connecting back to my Greek heritage that I had mentioned in the additional information section.
I hope this video was helpful to someone out there, not as an example of what an essay should look like, but an example of one that was kind of true to who I am and that I think really gave an impression of my character in a way that clicked well with the Stanford submissions officers. Everybody's essay is different and really beautiful in its own way. There's a lot of issues with the college application process, but it is kind of cool to sort of build this character or story about yourself that you share with someone. I think I learned a lot about myself by sort of having to condense that all into one thing, even if it wasn't, you know, as perfect of a description of myself as I might be able to give to my closest friend. It's still an interesting experience and albeit a very awful and excruciating and stressful one. Uh, I hope you guys have an all right experience writing your essays. Leave a comment below if you have any questions for me about the essay writing or application process and I'll do my best to help out. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.